No people means no 501 patrol. It's gonna be a piece of cake. Here we go. Ready and action. The visual style definitely comes out of the house itself. Because he's blind, there's not a lot of lights inside. And that really defines the look of the movie. What I wanted to, to have is, is I wanted to have uh, things that really exist, like some lights in the street and some lights in the backyard. And I think that adds to the realism of it. There's one particular scene, at least stylistically, that I'm very proud of, which is the full darkness scene in the cellar. You are submerged in complete darkness. There's no light, but it's not a black screen. You see that the doors are closed. You see that there's no escape. My favorite part is how every time the blind man shoots his gun and there's light, color comes in for a couple frames. And then it goes black and white again. It really puts you in a strange mindset and, and it makes for a very scary set piece. Alex! Something about this movie reminds me of a graphic novel. The palette is really beautiful and gray with pops of color and it's stylized and elevated. I try to create a, a pattern of light that has different colors and has different textures. Visually, I think it's expressive to make audience feel something. That is making this a very classy, stylized film, and it has this beautiful look, and him and Pedro really, really make something special with this. Give me a 25, 25. Pedro, look at it. He has such a good sensitivity for lighting, and to, to make it look stylish and, and interesting, but at the same time, keep it real. Like that opening shot of the drones. But first you think you're looking at suburbia America, and then once you get closer, you start realizing that doesn't look good, and then you realize you're looking at a guy dragging a girl in the middle of the street. Amazing. Thank you. The audience is going to enjoy the look of this film. While you are like walking through the story, you're gonna say, oh, that's a good image there. I think combination of the light and the house creates a pretty unique tension. Hopefully, you know, the audience will feel they're looking at something they haven't seen before. My name is Stephen Lang, and I play the blind man. She knows her guy. I think of him, to some extent, as an urban legend. Cut! He is a recluse, a vet. Shrapnel left him completely blind. His wife died, and his little girl got run down in a car accident. Life has pretty much uh, taken everything from him. And so it seems like a tailor-made situation to these kids. Rolls up. For a large segment of this film, he's the victim. Who, who's there? And you can't help but sympathize with him wanting to uh, defend his territory. Motherfucker, I said stop! But he is a very capable guy here. He really is master of his universe. You better fucking stop! 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 Let's get out of here. And then there's a wrinkle. We learn that he's moved into another phase of darkness in his life. We have to get her out of here. If you ask him, he's going to tell you, I don't want to hurt these kids. It's not what he wants to do but he needs to kill them. There's no way around that in his story because otherwise things will be very, very bad for him. You know, Steven walks on set and he was a very strong presence. And the other actors I could see, they were like terrified because he's wearing these contact lenses. And those scenes they're involved in, they're very physical. He brings it on, like he would really give 200% every scene and. And it was scary for them, like, there wasn't a moment where he was going soft on them. He's really scary as the blind man, which is great. No! He can't see anything, yet he's really agile and aggressive. No! 
I had bruises in my back. I had his hands in my neck. How many of you are there? There's a shot that we did uh, the other day where the blind man comes and then I narrowly avoid him. I was like laughing because I was so scared. I was like, oh my God, this is so scary. I think what I probably love most about the character He's this wonderful combination of real strength and absolute vulnerability and weakness. No! It's a great challenge to kind of explore that tension of victim and perpetrator. I think that in The Blind Man, hopefully together we've, we've created uh, a new character, a character who hasn't really been seen before. And uh, that's a great thing to do. As an audience, I like when the filmmakers are kind of forcing me to pick a side. I want to show you an array of characters and let the audience choose their main characters. Betty is good at this sort of anti-hero thing. He plays with those roles, and Rocky is our bad guy, good guy. You are rooting for her, start a new life with a little sister that she is more of a mother to than a sister. California, what do you say you and I move there together? Would you like that? But you also know what she's doing is bad. Oh, well, she's a fighter, that's for sure. That's what she is, and she's all heart and drive. There's very few things that are gonna stop her from going after that money. What are you doing? I'm pressing the panic button. If I manage to get in range, the system will call 911 and the police will- No, wait! But then we wouldn't keep the money. Oh. Well, Alex is a kid that is very conflicted. Ironically, by robbing houses, he's trying to make enough money to pay for his law school. So he's a, he's a very unique and strange character in a way. Alex needs to leave his home because he's not happy there. His future's not heading in a direction that he wants it to. So he sees the money as an escape so he can leave Detroit with Rocky. If we get this money, I'm going away with you guys. I know you will. His weakness is, is, is that he's in love with, with Rocky, and so he will follow her to the end of the world, no matter what. <laughs> the blind man, he's not a villain with a mask on. He's a laudable guy. He's blind, he's disabled, he's lost his daughter. I mean, he's just been kind of crapped on. And here are these kind of young snots coming in here and just, you know, driving another nail in the coffin of his life. The cool thing about this character is that you're gonna think, okay, this is the good guy. The bad guys are the kids that are breaking into this guy's house. Now you do as I say, all right? But then we're gonna start revealing the guy's not that good of a man either. She's the one who killed his daughter. This guy definitely has a purpose and definitely there's no chance he's gonna let them go without a fight. Ready and action. Money is the driving force at the beginning of the movie. He's a stronger guy, he's the one that comes up with the idea to do this. That's kind of fucked up to have a blind guy, isn't it? Just because he's blind don't mean he's a fucking saint, bro. He's a guy who likes money, likes to look good, have his girl next to him. Yo, we keep hitting houses like today's Rocky. He's a personable guy. You know, I think I wanted people to either hate him or love him. Do you have any idea what bringing a gun to a burglary means? Yeah. It gives me a better chance to defend myself, Alex. Who's there? Before he dies, he redeems himself and he does something honorable. How many of you are there? Man, I it's just fucking me. Just let me go. Bede has made sure that you really care for these characters and you know what's going on in their heads and you know why they're doing this. And so there's a lot more to this than your average thriller or horror film. All of these characters, they make us think that maybe things in life are not as black and white as we would like them to be. And this movie, like, I would say pretty much of all the characters have were shady morals. So you just have to pick the one that you connect with the best. So that, that's the part that I love about the story. It's just like nobody is a saint. Uh, 
the house is not easy to get into but it's really 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 tough to get out of <laughs> we've built here is a is a replica of a h actual house in Detroit for a story like this one we needed a place in a particular street in the neighborhood that you could believe that is that it's just one guy living in there we come here we make that house work for us here on stage we shot the inside of the house first in a dark studio which is crazy when you see the movie you're like wow we shot that in the studio what about that window there's no bars on it. I can fit in there. The bathroom is where we actually enter the house for the first time. Rocky uh, breaks that glass, the glass falls out. She slides the window over, triggers the alarm, and then the race is on to set the alarm off. She starts making her way down into the living room. This is the first time we notice that the living room is so not what we imagined. The upstairs leads up to the second floor, which has his bedroom. When I'm walking up those stairs, it's crazy because you feel you're walking into an actual dude's house. It was important for Fede to, to give this blind man a story. Who is this guy and should we feel for him or against him? You want to feel who this guy is and these kids are coming in to rob him. Once they're in the house, they find themselves trapped in. The blind man, he's cut out the landing here and created essentially a, a bit of a dungeon. So the idea is that we can get our actors down here and actually feel like we can get disoriented and lost. Make their way through here and they enter into the unknown space here. And as you turn around, What we've tried to do is create a space for Cindy. The blind man, he just has a purpose. He's trying to have his own baby again, and he's trying to make this feel as warm and, and comfortable as he possibly can. The back of the basement allows us to have the, the eerie space and the, the eerie shapes. And then this is, this is the tie-in to the side yard porch. So we can shoot this way and we've got the, the brick wall of the next door. And then from the outside, you can actually look down into this space. That's how we kind of cheat being on the stage. I think audiences are gonna enjoy the house. I think they're gonna enjoy the, the grittiness of it. This was a lot of fun to be able to design something that I feel like hadn't been seen before. We need to get out of this room. 